I am very excited about today's video. I, for years, have enjoyed videos by Arthur Reader on YouTube. He's constantly bringing to light software that I was unaware of and hardware that I was unaware of. And I reached out to him and asked if he wanted to collab on a video. So enjoy this video on using high quality cameras as webcams. And afterwards, be sure to check out his channel for my follow up video on a similar topic. So I use my Canon M50 as my webcam. And as you can see, it does a good job integrating into like OBS, but I also use it in Zoom. I use it in Jitsi. I use it in Skype. I even use it on the web version of Discord when I need to. And <clears throat> though it's not perfect, it does have a pretty decent image quality. It's low resolution. I think it's like 540 pixels high, but it's almost nigh visibly lossless um, coming through the pipe. So it looks pretty clean. I shoot some of my videos this way where I just capture right to the camera like this. And I do all my video conferencing this way. I have a beautiful lens on my Canon M50 um, with the nice, you know, powerful depth of field and all that kind of stuff. This, um, this is the end result. And when you do your streams of your desktops or your video conferences, you too can have this quality if you have a supported camera. Let's dive into it. This is something that can come really handy for the project and it's totally optional if you want to do longer form videos. You can actually get this thing. It's got barrel jack on this side and it shows up as a Canon battery on this side. You have, of course you have your, your barrel jack that goes into that battery pack and then the USB plug. You give it any like cell phone charger power or whatever and it'll work. And on the bottom of most modern cameras is a spot for it right here. Uh, just kind of slide that in there and it plugs into the hole and you can power the battery for as long as you need. Before we get too crazy into this process, it is going to require a little bit of software. The great news is the software is free and open source and very likely already included into the repository of your Linux distribution. I'm running a Debian system and in Debian, um, they are definitely included. So the first one is G photo. G photo is kind of like the remote control interface for lots of different cameras. Now this is where you got to start because you got to find out if your camera is supported by G photo. I'm running the Canon M50. So I'm going to do M five zero and sure enough, here we go. Canon EOS M, um, M50 image capture for taking pictures. Trigger capture, I don't remember what that is. <laughs> Live view, that's the one that makes the difference. And configuration, which is good. You can set modes and whatnot. But live view, that's the sweet stuff. If you got live view, you're in luck. The other module we're gonna need is the Video for Linux loopback. Um, this, it's a module, but installs under Debian at least as just sudo apt install video for Linux loopback. And once this is enabled, and I'll get to that in a minute, once it's enabled, you can have this pipe video into a virtual webcam. Uh, I can't stress this enough. It doesn't do the audio, just does the video. Again, we'll dive into that. And the last piece, of course, is FFmpeg. The, I mean, this really doesn't need that much of an introduction. Everyone knows FFmpeg is absolutely phenomenal. And one of the things it can do is it can take um, images or video or feeds, and then it knows how to pipe it into video for Linux loopback. So we're gonna grab the G photo to spit the video into FFmpeg, and then FFmpeg will pipe it into video for Linux loopback, and then boom, a web camera. But how do we do it? So you got your hardware set up. Make sure your camera's plugged in. Uh, make sure it's turned on. Make sure you got your USB connected to the port. And let's make sure our camera, in my case, the Canon M50 G Photo 2 Auto Detect. And boom, the Canon EOS M50. All right, so the next part is we need to make sure our module is loaded. So sudo mod 
probe video for Linux to loop back. Oh, this thing's fighting me. Video for Linux to loop back. Um, exclusive. This is this is terrible. So we're gonna drop this command in here, and we're gonna go over what this command does. I usually script this out because I'm lazy. You can type it in by hand if you want, but I highly recommend making an alias or something. So obviously we want to run as sudo because this is a mod module mod probe video uh, for Linux loop pack exclusive caps as I, the way I understand this is exclusive caps as a compatibility of some sort. I know that when I have that on programs like zoom and Jitsi automatically recognize the camera. And if it's not in there, it's hit and miss. Uh, max buffer was just kind of a buffer problem. That I, I think was solved with that. Again, your camera may be different check the documentation it's easy to get lost in the weeds but it's totally worth it so we start the module like that modules running if for any reason you need to kill this module mod probe dash r video for linux 2 loopback that destroys the module so you're back to square one but you get it going again boom again script it it'll make your life so much easier so now I'm going to run this other command, which I'm totally going to copy and paste because it's a doozy. It's a doozy. This is where we kind of bring it all together. Gphoto, you know, that recognizes our camera, in my case, the M50. Standard output, that says grab whatever we're grabbing and just send it along down into a pipe. Set config viewfinder one. So some cameras like mine have more than one viewfinder. Uh, mine has the little eyepiece that you look through, you know, if you're in bright light and you need like a tiny little spot where you can peek through with your eye. And then it has the flip out screen. Viewfinder zero, the default is the tiny low resolution eyeball hole. And uh, viewfinder one is the pop out screen. And we want to run the capture movie. So we're going to be capturing a succession of frames versus single frames. We have the pipe and we bring it into FFmpeg. This is, this is, this is the best part here. This is where all the magic happens. FFmpeg will grab the frames. Now, if you have an M50 and similar cameras, you'll be in luck. It already actually um, outputs from the capture as a raw MJPEG directly from the camera. So no hardware encoding has to happen. If your camera is capturing like raw image files, you might have to change this V codec to MJPEG and then add a bit rate to it. I do threads one because I don't want to go too haywire, but I'm not entirely sure if threads is affected by the copy. I'm not sure. Again, check the documentation, do your research and experiment. Now for the format video for Linux two, and we pipe, to video two. I usually do video two because sometimes I have two webcams on there. I have the built-in webcam on this laptop. Sometimes I have my Logitech and sometimes I'm using a capture card. So the downside of this technique is sometimes you run it and it's running the correct script and it still fails and you have to run it a few times to make sure it's running correctly, which is really hard when you're first setting up. But once you build the script, you know, you run it, check it, run it. It's good. I usually set mine up at the beginning of my work day and let the camera just chill all day long. So we're going to run it. So far it looks good. So I'm going to check it out with the brave browser and I'm going to use the brave browser to get over to Jitsi, my preferred video chat platform. It might work. It might not. And it looks like it works. Here we are. We're popping frames through. So there we are. It's simple as that. Uh, things to keep in mind. This does not pull audio data. It is literally just pulling the raw MJPEGs, piping them through the USB 2.0, and that's it. No audio. So external microphones are your friends. Get yourself a nice little Fi Fine for cheap like I have, which you can make sound pretty good. 
but you do have to make sure you have a separate audio source for your conferencing. And that is just the surface. We just barely scratched the surface of this um, technique. Hopefully this has been a helpful tutorial. Um, thank you for uh, checking this out. And back on my page, um, Chris actually made a video follow-up because uh, realistically, I just barely scratched the surface of what can be done with Gphoto. And there's some amazing things that can be done with that. So check that out. Link will be down below. I hope that you enjoyed that video by Arthur. I, as he stated, have a video over on his channel using my DSLR uh, to capture images and other functionalities of Gphoto 2. I'm so glad that he was able to do this video because my camera's so old, I don't think it has the functionality to be used as a webcam. I wish it did because I have a horrible webcam. So I hope that you learned something from him that I couldn't show you directly, but be sure to check out his channel to see other functionalities of Gphoto 2 and your cameras. Thanks again for watching. Visit my website, filmsbychris.com, and also check out his channel. Again, there'll be links in the description. And have a great day.